afternoon, and ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast here on the road to Kharkov with me, your host, Imperial Dane. And we're off here to a one versus one with Lee Young A fighting here for Germany, for the Reich, for the third SS Panzer Dijon Toten Kopf going up here versus Red Wings fighting here for the Soviet Union, the glory of Comrade Stalin. And the second guard's mechanized core. Special five command here on the way for him. Dual combat use. This is very much red wings. Afterwards, there'll be plenty of spe Stravniki. That is very much a red wings opening and strategy, if you will. Doctrine's Island, Lee shot rifle and defensive tactics for Lee Young A, who has actually gone straight off for elite troops here right off the bat. Two, one gun already in the field and one on the way. So there we go. So an initial push here for the right flank on the map already. Bit of catwalking here attempted it seems. We have taken it. Moving up here slowly but surely. Interesting enough he goes for this point, not the cutoff. In fact he also was a bit here denied cover. Interesting, interesting. Not the usual kind of sort of opening you'd see here on the road to Kharkov. This is a bit more common though to wire off the very edge here of this cut-off point to sort of ward off enemies moving into the north to sort of harass here at least easily or sort of make things a bit more difficult for it true since if they try here they sort of have to go through here which gives a bit more time to get a few more shots. Bart wine going a bit. Lots of bart wine both sides either deny cover sort of make it hard to move around. And there we go, we got the first Stravniki up here for Red Wings, more on the way. Stravniki being penal battalions, criminals for different reasons, formed into special units for special tasks, and depending on the task, they could be either well equipped or poorly equipped if they, for example, were to be utilized as a minesweeper or simply a diversion, which was also common for some, but otherwise, they were generally actually pretty well equipped for more assault like missions with machine guns and other sort of automatic weaponry. Little fun fact. It was otherwise less common for some units to be equipped with the uh, SVT 40 rifles on a larger scene. Although, I mean, it's enough some units like naval infantry, that is, you know, basically crewmen from ships sort of basically forming into infantry units, were in some cases equipped like that. Happened, for example, during the Battle of Sevastopol in Crimea, when the Germans were attacking there during 1941. 42. Because they're marching up, we got three squads so far. No MD42 so far, by the way, he's actually sort of forming up a strong point here, going to a difficult sort of for. The oh, Red Wings sort of quickly up the new M. Commentator sort of trying to hold up the fascists but not quite succeeding. The Grenadiers in an interesting position. Staying here at full range, he could maybe move up closer, but seems like he wants to be ready in case Red Wings tries to sneak in from North here. So, interesting sort of setup there. Third Stravnik there arriving for Red Wings. Do have some flamethrowers on the way for some of them. And he is falling back. So we've got that flamethrower up. But basically a bit disguised from X to make it look like a rifle so they wouldn't be sagging so easily. In fact, the ROK2, in fact, also had the flamethrower tank look like a regular backpack. So, little fun fact there, since flamethrower operators were generally very hated by the other side, no matter you know what army. And it was generally not uncommon for saying anyone would surrender, you know, and it turned out to be a flamethrower soldier, sort of be discreetly pulled aside and then shot or hung. Same fate, generally also tend to befall on snipers. There are generally some types that soldiers generally always hated, so a little fun fact there. Little fun fact. There you go, troops moving about there, coming under fire from the Grenadier. Actually, a bit exposed here, of course. I mean, you do have the flamethrower versus the Grenadiers, but at the same time, they've got two squads bearing down on them, which is still a lot of shots going in there. And he's up to four. Stravnik units here, Red Wings. Quite a bit of firepower, we do see the lap machine gun up here at the same time. For Lee Young A, adding in a lot of firepower in the other direction as well. So that pr proved to be a bit nasty. 
I'd like to make a nice company up here and again very oh we got an MB42 there. So not a light opening all of a sudden at least not that light. We do note here that Lee Young is sort of struggling, sort of gaining a nice amount of map control. He's keeping his force rather concentrated, a bit closed up. Which in one regard is making it a bit harder sort of for uh, Red Wings here to sort of overrun him, but at the same time it's also making it a bit harder to sort of gain a lot more territory than again with the Strafnika running about. We do of course that's still going to be tricky. He's going to want to sort of land a good blow here versus Red Wings infantry and then sort of break through, but so far Red Wings is not losing too many men at any time. Additional gun ideas, you know, he could have waited a bit here and gotten some panzer gun ideas. I think that could add a bit more potency to his forces. Versus the Red Wings. Mine's I have the that would be my thoughts on the matter. Harness with mine, he's all sort of prepared for Red Wings laying down mines. Of course, he's controlling a lot of the maps. I mean, that's obviously a concern there. It's a good thing there by Lee Young. It seems like he was actually sort of waiting or just sort of holding back. He seems a bit paranoid, a bit nervous here about whatever Red Wings might do. And there you go, the gun is not really in good cover here actually. In fact, they're out in the open. Making things a bit easier for Red Wings, who is sticking to cover. But there you go, drawing them into the heavy MG42. Then we've got a scout car rhyming here. In this case, Lee Young should actually have a good advantage in our versus Red Wings since Red Wings as well. Rather. Open to it since he's got no anti-tank grenades due to the fact that he's stuff he don't have them. So right here there's a small opening there for Lee Young to do a lot of damage to Red Wing and his infantry sort of decides to pursue. Of course mines are a bit of a concern but even then there should be, you know, as long as he stays off the road he should be reasonably safe. Either way he should probably seek to sort of do a lot of damage to this Strafnik as much as possible, punish them as much as possible, do as much damage as possible and that way sort of gain a lot of ground as quickly as possible before Red Wings is able to sort of bring in something bigger. Because right now he's got the resources to sort of already take up and go for something well bigger. More mines up here. Red Wings mining junctures and roads. Not bad thought there at all. We do now see more territory streaming back into the hands of the Germans of the Reich. A few Panzer gunners to sort of further buff up your lines here versus Red Wings would be a nice idea. Would be a nice idea. Or a second scout car for that matter. Again, we're seeing a lot of. Penal troops and more scout cars could certainly further punish that and further harm that. If you so want it. Seeing lots of flamethrowers being handed out we're down to two now for example, so that's definitely a bit unpleasant. And there we go, we got the mechanized armor company up. Again another favorite here of Red Wings. With SU 76s on the way. Oh no, set off the mine lane, lost the entire gun into his squad. Bad news, medic bunker up there. Pulled back entirely from the left flank. And there's nothing here to support the gunadiers and cover them. He should move up the scout cut to support, but interesting enough, he's not. And that could actually lead them to some of a nasty position. He's got the flame for units moving up, they're likely to flash them out. Lee Young here seems a bit intimidated. It's Maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Replacement Grenadiers, again, apart me, really would like to see some Panzer Grenadiers, I think that could do him quite well. Though he doesn't have any bullets, well, he's actually got the Get to the Guns, which actually makes the upgrade for the Scout Cut cheaper. Though I would say that, Jenny, if I mean, you're going to get an upgrade for it, you should get the Accuracy Upgrade, since it pretty much affects every shot, and just overall makes it a lot more lethal, I think, personally, somewhat more lethal, in particular as veterans is all added on, it definitely becomes quite potent. So, I mean, rather, I mean, Something like this, not really worth it. Even the accuracy bonus, you can just get one scout car, is going to be worth it. Compared to just the few munitions to save here, so that would be my suggestion. And thoughts there. Oh, there we go, they're catching this stuff. Out in the middle of the road with the MD42. Bad news there for Dimitri Boris Vasily and Fritzi. Pack 40 there on the way. MD42 about to get a run here by the stuff. flanking in. Scout car could maybe move into the day there. Into salt going into the west here. Like we more like machine guns, maybe. But there you go. Lots of catches inflicted on the 
penal troops. Down to two men. One man. And there go got the ancient ticks moving up the, the light assault gun. Used quite a lot to sort of support different infantry units, providing light anti-tank support and light artillery support wherever needed. Based basically on the German Stug principle, although a bit more loosely, though they actually did something that was actually very close to it. That was actually based on Panzer Fleet as well. They captured during uh, Operation Uranus, I believe it was called, the part there where they retook Stalingrad. Captured plenty of Panzer Fleets and they converted them into assault guns using basically the same gun here as this one, but taken from T-34s that had been knocked out. Some of them were actually captured back by the Germans. But now we do see here that Lee Young sort of making good progress back. Now, if he's not considered, say, upgrading some of his grenadiers with the Jaeger packages, that could certainly give him a bit more potency versus the Stravniki as well. I mean, that could help him, and certainly at a cheaper cost as well than just getting full all light machine guns, plus we could use them a bit more on the moves. I mean, getting sort of a mix of light machine guns and Gewehr for the fleet or Jäger infantry pack just when you're sort of there. I mean, that's not exactly a bad idea as the Germans. In particular, it's going to get more veterans here. I mean, those Gewehr for the fleet become overall really lethal on many ranges. Got another CC-76 moving in there. Generally always gets two, sort of having a nice little balance effect. Can all sort of deploy a lot of fire versus light to medium vehicles. Do some decent damage that way. There you go. Slowly moving up here, creeping up towards a few. I mean, he's already really pushed it back, but now at the same time, the left flank is really weak. And looks like Red Wing sort of senses he's placing a lot there on the right, so he's moving up the west. Not a bad fault there. We see a bunker up to c protect the cutoff point. Very neat there. Very edge actually will play get more than a medic bunker. Medic command bunker occasionally. There we go, a machine gun bunker up. That's a nice idea there. But there you go, rather a violent barraging going on there versus the MD42 forcing it back. No taking up here for Lee Young. I mean, he could move up a bit further. A large strip of barbed wire here to cover the western munitions. Interesting, interesting. Looks like Red Wing sort of getting ready to punish the here on the right flank. Moving up men have got the assault gun supporting and everything. He's only got pack folly, that's going to be a bit cheap, so the cat is six with there. And of course, right here, had he had some Gewehr 43s, he probably could have sent those stuff near he back and running. Good reaction here. I mean, no point having the scout car around the assault guns. So might as well move to deal with the infantry over here, which can't defend themselves. Bashes the scout car. Nice bit of firing there. But there you go, Scout. Assault gun thing to deal with the Scout car. And there you go, hits going off. Pop smoke, Fritz Nebel. Nebel. There we go, popping that, getting out of there. And there we go, we got the assault guns rushing forwards. There are no pants, but it's really taking back. We got the pack forming in, being caught by a combat in Guinea advance here. So in the end, that's partly stopped there by the gunners, but also by the machine gun bunker there, providing a formidable obstacle. And a quick bounce on the pack 40. Well done there, taking up going on here for Lee Young. That's been pushed a bit back here by Red Wings again. More pioneers with more minesweepers for Li Yang. No flamethrowers, it would seem. No flamethrowers. Kind of flammenwerfer. And you go to their flank by the Strafniki. And you up there on the Strafniki. Granite is holding up there. The enemy is taking our territory. He's actually up to two MP42s now. Interesting. There you go, he's teched up. He could go very quickly now for a Panzer IV. That could actually put a lot of pressure on the Red Wings if he's nice properly, I think. 
If he can catch those as you some six as you also have fuel cash going up here for him. Got both assault guns firing where they're at the grenadiers while peanut troops flank up. Larger push up, we need to be careful about all those men being too close to each other. I mean, that could make a very good sort of target area for the SU 76s, if anything. There we go. Bad arch on East. Nice bit of damage there to the building, but it is time for the mid game analysis. Count situation is sort of more or less a 50 50 split here on the map. With a slight victory point advantage in terms of on the map, but on the other hand, a much bigger one so in terms of actual victory points. To uh, eight wings, Lee Young there, bits no falling behind. I mean, currently he has the option for sort of you know, getting some Panzer falls out. That I think would be a good idea. I mean, that might be able to sort of punch in for his also so far. The ACS is to be more careful. Could also maybe catch them and knock them out. So I mean, that's definitely something to consider right there for Lee Young. I mean, there's the option of taking up further, but I don't really think it's going to be worth it. He's not really gotten a lot here from the second tier to sort of make that worth it. I mean, if you're going to go straight for that, I know, nor tier 3, you need to get a bit more out of your life to make a nice company. I feel like you need to go something like, you know, mobile defense, have a Puma covering things there. But with the kind of sort of force he's at at the moment, I don't think going for tier 4 right away would be a wise idea. Instead, he should go for, if he again, so get some Panzer Gris, maybe two squads to quick one with Panzer tracks and sort of take from there. But get this. Support armor caught up, get some Panzer Falls up, maybe an Ospin sort of punish and attack at Red Wings. I think that will work out reasonably well here for Lee Young. In particular, we consider the current command point situation, which overall no, lets him know, of course, there's still going to be time, even if it goes for some kind of doctrinal medium armor. There's still going to be some time, so the Panzer Falls, for example, could do quite well until then. So I think that should be a priority there for Lee Young, and I partly would also like to see at least upgrading one kind of escort with the Jaeger infantry package to make things a bit more miserable for Red Wings infantry. Looking at Red Wings, still no doctrine, you should definitely make a choice here. I mean, there are plenty of options. Shock rifle for some IS-2s or KV-8s to sort of do some serious damage to Red Wings. Or, well, Lee Young, oh, go for Land Lease, which he's quite fond of. I mean, that could give him the Sherman, maybe an Evans 5 half track assault group. Some other things to sort of apply further pressure to Lee Young. I mean, that could also do quite well. But again, something needs to be done and needs to be chosen. I mean, he could also go with this, but I think at this stage, it might not quite have the same effect. It's such much more to sort of gain a more s formidable advantage early in game and sort of slow things down there rather than sort of at this stage of the game. It's not going to make much sense to choose it now. So I think that's rather it there. Let's pop back to Lee Young and let's pop back to the fight. Balloting did not leave much in effect there. Scout calls in need of repairs. Closing in on Vetsinzi 2 there. Making decent progress on the right flank of the Ducey Red Wings. Hmm. Slowly maneuvering to deal with that. Slowly maneuvering. But back to sort of being more dominant. He's moving ahead the scout car though without getting proper repairs for it. Scheiße. And he's taking up. He's actually taking up. I have to say again, considering what he's gone for, that could actually be a rather bad idea. I mean, there's in theory, I mean, it could maybe work. I mean, he wouldn't be far off from getting a Panther, but he definitely have to sort of focus on it properly. And I think those are killing more Russians than Germans. Nope, and somehow not. Still, if he got, he's, he's going for it, he should get it now. And then quickly go for the Panther as soon as possible, which would actually be in about a couple of minutes afterwards, but still needs to be done schnell. No time for lollygag or anything like that, he just has to do it. 
Obviously to pull back the scout car. Stun grenades going off here for the first time since we'll be using them. Scout car went down. Rather senseless waste there. Gunny's flanking in. Pioneer's pulling back. He should pull both. Oh, we set up a fuel cache there to sort of further help. But even then, I mean, he'd be able to get a Panther right now if he won't. Just gets that spare Panther calls up. Get it up! Get it up! Schnell! Come on, Panther quickly turning against you. Liang. Very quickly. Get the heavy panzer caught. Los! You want something? Get both pioneers to work on it. There we go. A minute and a half, or well, less than a minute and a half, he can get the panther then. In fact, had he not gone for the fuel cache, I'm pretty sure he could have had that panther up as soon as it was done. And there's a time for everything, but I don't territory. really think at that stage you really need to sort of get the first panther. Sure, it'll help later, but right now I think his priority should be getting a panther as soon as humanly possible. And not having spent the manpower on this, I think, would have aided him a lot more. So, just saying, just saying. Red Wing is displaying a strong control of the victory point still. Being things rather tricky here for Li Yang. And here we go, a quick flank there from several sides. And there you go, assault gun spouting straight here towards the center positions of Li Young's hit. Falls on the right flank. Not good. And there he goes, finally guns of Gewehr 43 to the Jäger infantry package there for the Grenadier. Increasing their firepower versus those filthy Russians. And there you go, we see Dr. Mochoz, it is a lend lease. A Sherman has arrived here to push through German lines. Pack 40 firing eight. might get one, it is six, might get it, might get it. Shoot, Heinz, shoot. Almost. And missed. And a unit that got utterly wiped out. Quick flank there. Shooting going on there. Nice time grenade there. Granites need to get a bit closer. A bit closer. Their rifles or semi automatic they've got a bit of sort of medium range, not long range, which they're currently fighting at. So moving up. There we go. Get the Panther. Get the Panther. In fact, he could have gotten it. Probably half a minute before that. Rather, Lee Young is sort of missing any good time in getting up the Panther. Fortunately for him. More fortunately for Red Wings, in fact, popping over to Red Wings again. His assault guns, both of them have actually been heavily damaged, so I suppose that pulls him up the front line for the time being here. But the Sherman's could be causing a lot of problems for Lee Young and the third. If S Panzer to be shown. Van Gehen about to get wrecked. And the gun is in large amounts of In fact, he's up to five units of stuff, Niggy, all with a flame from him. That's a lot of fire. That's a lot of fire. Esmond Field covering part of the victory point there, and there we go. Panzer Kampfwagen 5 mobilized. Need to get on the front here immediately. Also, get a Pintermap machine gun on it. And otherwise keep it properly supported. <laughs> Rapidly losing territory there here to the Russians though. It looks like a bit of troop training was actually used on the pan to sort of speed up the process. That's not a bad idea. In fact, if you use it again, Sort of quickly get it towards veterans here. Well, two actually. But a nice idea there. Nice idea there. But again, he's going to need more to really get out of it, I think. I mean, he's got the resources for it, so might as well, you know, pop it again a few times there. Quickly get that Panther to say, for example, veterans here too. 
when you're not returning, they got the things a bit and certainly get a lot harder for Red Wings armor to deal with. And then we've got a second Sherman up, by the way, here. It's a very dangerous situation that Lee Young's moving into. Pack 40 covering. Oh, the explosion that we hit to the SG 76 is careful, careful. 4 6 later. Turn it around, turn it around, careful! Turn it around! Oh, there's explosion, the hits are two extra zero sixes. Oh, there we go, turn around, but there goes Shermans are flanking, well done, pull back the Panther though, pull back the Panther, they're going for the rear armor, already going past the pack 40. Bad position here, he needs to blitz out of there, he needs to blitz out of there, got one Sherman. Oh, now he's exposing the rear to the extra zero sixes. Pan pack down. Shot bunting off. They need to get the Panther out of there. And there we go. Panther down. He's shooting up now. Now he was outnumbered heavily. Yet stuck around. Not too well handled there by Lee Young. That was definitely a massive tactical blunder, considering what he was trying to sort of go for and all the resources invested into the partner. We would have think he should have got more resources invested into it, but. Even then, he should have gotten it out of there once he was, you know, largely surrounded, or at least tried to get out before it happened. That was definitely not good. Now we got it. Veteran C2 S76. <laughs> 15 command points, though, so there might be another sort of glimmer of hope here for Lee Young. He's gone Lee Troops there. 15 command points for the. Well, Russians, which means he's back to Ultra Cut as well, which also means there's a chance of the Tiger Race arriving in about, well, a minute or so. Which point he could try and crush his Russian opponents with that, unless, of course, he gets it sort of outnumbered and knocked out like the Panther. Which is also where things basically get a bit tricky. So of course have to see, but Red Wings does have a mighty potent force at the moment. A Tiger Ace though could actually knock out of damage again. Well handled, he could also do a lot of damage to the Ace if he's not careful. And before two slowing down a Russian advance there. And there we go, everything pinned here on the hope of the Tiger Ace. And that it will turn things around here for Germany. It's right. Bit of shooting going on there. The ace moves forward. Ohms up there on the Stravniki. Not a lot of victory points left here for, for Li Yang. Edge coming on five days of it, one might get it. Almost, almost, one more hit, one more hit. Kaput. Oh, Satchel charged it on the Tiger Ace. Nicely done there, nice chunk of damage. In the end, the unit did sacrifice itself. I still say that nice chunk of damage on the Ace should help a bit. And there got the Edge 6 firing at range. Shot still plinking off. Still, that is definitely throwing Red Wings into a bit of a nice situation there. And we got a Duska. Oh, what's that? No, that's an MD42 actually stolen there from the Germans. The Ace could actually clear that. Oh, the Pioneer's not repairing. The Pioneer's not repairing. Building almost ready to collapse. One more hit. One more hit. Oh, two more hits, maybe. Almost. So there we go. 
building collapsed with everybody in it. Well, everybody was still alive in it. Light machine gun drop things are still not looking good for Lee Young. He's bleeding out of men quickly and due to the ace presence he's actually not getting as many resources as possible. He can't really replace those losses he's actually suffering right now which is actually pretty bad. Well, for him that is, not for Red Wings, that's pretty good. At least that gives him some measure there, sort of slowing down the advance here of Lee Young. Another satchel charge this time, though he does not stop up and then he's knock out his ace. Got you another infantry unit there, wiped out. There you go. Sherman's getting ready to flank this one. Six holes are moving in. There we go. Unit annihilated. Quick blitz creek this time around. He does seem to learn a bit here. A target weak point would do good. Targets a weak point. Flitz. Getting closer to the ace. Decreasing, well, the effectiveness of the armor. Vision getting high penetration there. Almost got one Sherman. Almost got one Sherman. Lots of shots there going through the tiger. And there you go. One down. Use target weak point on the other. Don't expose the rear though. Don't expose the rear. Four six. Oh, he's doing it, he's doing it. There you go, Eshin 6 got a shot there through, and then the Sherman finished it off. GG from Lee Young, and there we go, a loss to Germany. A loss to Germany, Panthers and Aces lost here. No victory for Red Wings there, I do think there were some slight strategic issues overall for Lee Young. Tactically did alright, but there were some problems with the strategy again. He did not get much out of the lighting against company. Then he rushed straight on for the Panther, but at the same time he didn't quite rush for it, which rather sort of left a nasty gap. And I mean, if you're going to use, you know, troop training, do it properly. You should get up to sort of, you know, some levels of veterancy before you know sending it out. But even then, you know, he failed to sort of quickly get it out when the time being came for it. So that was another problem, which rather mean, meant the Panther and the resources invested in it was utterly wasted. He could also have done more out of his doctrine. I mean, there were no troop training except that one time few stun grenades. I mean, most of the stuff he actually did basically happen until late in the game. I mean, he never really tried to sort of influence the spot and he chose it right at the beginning. So, there definitely some prompts, I think, for Lee Young. I mean, Red Wings could have chosen a doctrine fast and could certainly also make more use of the commander as well. I mean, he only basically got for the M4C Shermans. That's not really good either. I mean, he could have done a lot more out of that as well. If one has to be honest. But, you know, good use of the assault guns. They definitely played a role here. That damage tanks. Damage infantry is running. Certainly put some pressure there on Lee Young and Sonny Olsen short the scout car couldn't do too much damage as well. So those were some nice things there for him. Mr. Adet, the wings. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's match. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends, share it with everyone. If not, you know, send in a review and I'll write some feedback in the comment section. So thank you all for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye.